Hello everybody and welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. Welcome today to another flea market watch haul. Uh, I had to take an unexpected trip back to the deep south, back to Mississippi, and back to the place where I found the Fortis Marine Master for $70. I still haven't restored it yet, but uh, looking to do that pretty soon. So I've got another haul of four watches here today. Not gonna be as spectacular as the Fortis Marine Master, but I think they're really cool. But first things first, on my wrist today is gonna be the Laurier Gemini, if you can see it there, on an Omega NATO, the best NATO straps in the world. And here is the first watch today. This is an Elgin Day date, and I think this probably is uh, circa 1980s, I think, probably, uh, but uh, really good looking uh, watch, you know, in a date just homage style. But there is a problem with this watch, and it's something if you're going to go to flea markets to uh, purchase watches or you see a watch that catches your eye, you know, you really need to make sure that the watch is working before you purchase it. Now, I don't really care because I'm going to replace the movement in this, but um, yep, couldn't get it working with a new battery. And sometimes if you just let them sit, you know, for 24 hours or something with a new battery, uh, you know, they'll just start working. That happened to one of the other watches I'm about to show you, but not this one. So I'm gonna have to replace the movement, but yep, really, really good looking day date watch. Let's see uh, what the size is here. Let me zero out my caliper, probably 36 mil. Let's see, oh, 34, wow. 34.6, okay, all right. So pretty small watch, but I think it looks great. Now this uh, band that's on it, is uh, from Ticino, I just threw it on there. It did come with the bracelet, but the bracelet was kind of beat up, so I just decided not to do anything with the bracelet. So on to the next. So the next watch, I'm kind of in the same boat that I was in uh, with the last watch. Probably haven't found the correct size battery for this. It is just a button battery compartment there. Uh, but this is a Benrus Electronic Technopower. Now it's my understanding that this is pre-quartz, so it's gonna, Move, uh, think Bulova Accutron, I think is what, uh, you know, you're going to be seeing with this one. Uh, now, this is one of the early watches where you can't remove the case back uh, to take the movement out. It actually pops out through the front, so you have to remove the crystal. And then, I guess, somehow you can disengage the crown. Uh, so not sure exactly how to do that if I have to replace the movement, but I'm not sure I'd be able to. But this one, it just caught my eye. I thought it was worth the gamble. Um, none of these I paid, you know, really over $20 for. So, you know, I think there, there's some good finds if you can get them running. But it is on the original bracelet that it came with, Ben Russ original bracelet. It barely fits my ham hock wrist. So um, if I get it going, I can wear it, but I might have to put it on some type of strap or something along those lines, but I just had really never seen this particular watch before. And so I thought, hey man, I'd be cool to get it going. But uh, right now I've tried two batteries. I've got a third one that I can try to get it running. Uh, but uh, after that, I think I'm uh, SOL, but hey, you know, it was worth the gamble. And so the third watch is a Buren, I guess, dress field style watch here. This is, uh, you know, going to be from, I think, the the late 50s, early 60s, something along those lines. This one works immaculately well. Let me go ahead and fire it up here. It is hand wind. Uh, it does not hack. There you go. Getting the, the second hand move in there. It keeps immaculate time. Immaculate time for probably a no service, you know, the, the guy that I get these from, Generally what he does, especially if they're not running, is he just sort of opens the back and then kind of douses it with oil, which is not what you're supposed to do. But with this particular one, um, it is working fine right now. And again, all of these under $20, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's a great buy. Uh, this one winds up, it lasts a long time, tells the time really, really well. Uh, there's a lot of companies, I'm not really familiar with Buren, uh, but uh, there was a lot of companies that make this uh, particular style of uh, field watch there. 
the beautiful little domed uh, acrylic crystal. Uh, I did polywatch this, so I think something with polywatch that, you know, you need to kind of be aware of. It's not going to take out nicks and stuff like that or deep, deep scratches. It's really just those surface squirrely, squirrely, swirly scratches that it'll take out. But it did clean up pretty good, and I think it looks great. And um, it's West Germany, so Buren is a, a German company, apparently. So let's take a look at the size. I'm thinking this is also probably a 34, if I'm not mistaken. 33 and a half, yeah, 30, 33, 34, okay. All right, I did put it on this uh, Oxblood benchmark NATO strap. I'm not really sold on this particular strap. I just had it lying around. Um, it did come on a bracelet, but these don't really look that great on a bracelet. So, yep, did not do that. But I think it's a great find, especially for under $20, something from the 60s or the late 50s, I think absolutely fantastic looking. Uh, that's where I'm dating it. That might not be correct, but I've seen watches uh, that look exactly like this in that time period. So, yep, really good. So, on to the final watch and my favorite. So, this is a Gruen Day Date uh, Quartz. Uh, this was not running when I got it. I completely took it apart. I took the dial off. I took... Uh, you know, the hands off, not in that order, obviously. You take the hands off and then you take the dial off. Uh, you know, you'll notice that the day complication uh, isn't working correctly. Uh, when I took the dial and the hands off, it did work. So I don't know if there's some slippage in, in the gears or something or the tabs that are holding the day complication on are not working correctly, but it, I couldn't get it running. Took it apart, blew it out, all this stuff. Uh, and uh, got it looking really, really good. And then it fired right up. And this is keeping accurate time within a second over a few days. So it's amazing, you know, the, the, the time uh, keeping accuracy on this. And the reason I got it was because it has that beautiful patina uh, in the date window. Uh, just that, that dull kind of, you know, creamy-ish color. Uh, that you see on the older Rolex Datejusts, and that's what really attracted me to this watch. But the bracelet, overall, the watch is in very good shape. This, there's not that much uh, scratching at all, not that much scratching on the dial. Uh, the bracelet is actually in relatively good shape. Uh, the clasp, not too, not too beat up. This does fit me pretty perfectly. Uh, and, I mean, it's really, really, really an attractive watch. I think this was a good buy, especially for, I think I got this one for, you know, $18. So that's uh, really good here. Let me measure it. Probably 34, just like the other one. Uh, nope, we're going to go 35.7. So that's a 36 millimeter watch. The same size as the Rolex Datejust. Obviously, this is homaging one of those. So... Yeah, guys, I just took a quick trip back, kind of in a, an emergency little trip to the south. Figured I'd stop by and uh, see that guy again, see what he had. I'm happy with this haul, especially for all in, the total of all four watches was $61. So I think I got some good deals there and a couple of project watches that I can work on. So actually the movement in the Elgin day date is gonna be, I believe $16. So I paid 18 for the watch and then 16 for a brand new movement to get it running. That's a pretty good deal uh, in my book. So that's all I've got today, guys. I will see you next time.